Creating alcohol ink panels is fun and relaxing, but what do you do with them afterwards? Today I'll share a two for set of cards and tips on the best types of stamps and dies to use with your alcohol ink panels. I have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of Kirkland glossy photo paper and I'm using the back side here. The front of the paper is porous and designed to absorb the ink so you don't want to use the front. I've dropped on a little bit of rubbing alcohol and also some artist marker refills here. This is Caribbean Sky. Using alcohol marker refills is a great way to stretch your supplies and use them for more than one thing, so it's something I definitely like to do. I also have a greater range of colors with my marker refills than I do with alcohol inks. Here I have just a cupcake pedestal, and I actually just use this to take my photos of my cards. I prop up my cards on this. Happened to be on my desk because I had recently taken photos, so I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol in that so that I can draw it up in a pipette and add that to my card here. Of course, you can also use alcohol ink blending solution, though I find the rubbing alcohol to be more cost effective. So using the alcohol ink and blending solution is going to help to kind of thin out your alcohol inks. You can get them to move a little more freely on the paper, a little bit like a wet on wet technique with watercolor. You're gonna see your pigments move more if the water is wet. So I like to use the alcohol in this way to get a lighter, more wispy look. I use the lowest setting on my embossing heat tool in order to move the pigments around, but you could also use an air puffer. As always, all of the supplies used will be listed in the description down below. Here I'm adding sea glass, and I typically will limit the palette to only three colors so that I lessen the chance of making brown or too much mixing of colors. Things just get a little bit overwhelming. I also like to leave a lot of white space. This video is part of the Alta News seven year anniversary blog hop. There are tons of sponsors and prizes. Leave a comment on my blog post to enter the giveaway and be sure to like and subscribe while you're in the description down below. Frayed leaf was the third color I added and then I pulled out Alta New leaf canopy die set in order to die cut a few pieces from this panel. I also cut the panel in half. The reason I specifically chose leaf canopy is because the leaves on this are very simple in shape and open, not only on the die set, but also on the stamp set. When you're working with an alcohol ink panel, it can be very busy. Even your wispy areas can be super busy with the combination of colors and the texture that you have on the piece. So a good tip is to choose stamps and dies that have wide open spaces that aren't going to compete with the alcohol panel. Another tip is to create high contrast between the alcohol ink pieces and your background. So I pulled out a couple pieces of the Essentials black and white paper so that I can have a high contrast background against these lighter color alcohol inks. Now this die cut was a little boring. It only had the blue on it. So to add more color, you could do a couple things. You could actually go ahead and put some alcohol ink on your glass mat and pick it up with a water brush like I'm doing, or you could actually try to do a little bit of ink smushing as well. I wanted to have the alcohol ink in specific places on this die cut and have more control. So I opted to use a water brush. Now what I do is reserve one of my water brushes specifically for alcohol inks and I fill the barrel with alcohol instead of water. After the alcohol ink is completely dry, I put a little temporary adhesive on the back of the die cuts so that I could adhere it to my MISTI and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp these images. Now you wanna make sure that they're good and adhered so that it doesn't move, especially because stamping on alcohol ink panels, the stamps can kind of slip a little bit, so using a MISTI or a stamp positioning tool is a great idea to use in this case. Now here you can see I'm stamping with obsidian pigment ink. If you stamp with pigment ink, you'll need to heat emboss it after stamping because the ink won't dry fast at all and it's very likely you're going to smear the ink. The heat embossing will trap the ink and make it permanent. Otherwise, I would recommend an archival ink or even a stays on ink on top of your non-porous surfaces like this. Here's the finished card, and I have to say the most difficult part of this card was deciding which black and white paper to use. I wanted to use all of them. So I added a few enamel dots, and then I also created a very simple sentiment with the uppercase bold alphabet dies. Another tip to choose stamps to use on your alcohol ink panels is to stick with simple shapes. So these are simple leaves that are made up of very simple dots. Now this isn't wide open, but because there's enough space in between those simple dots, 
You can see a little bit of the alcohol ink panel through the stamped image without it looking cluttered and overwhelming. The high contrast black dots make these leaf clusters easily identifiable as an image and also separate them from the light colored alcohol ink background. I'm excited to read your comments down below, so be sure to leave one. I'd love to know what your favorite card is or maybe what your favorite tip was for choosing the right stamps to stamp on alcohol ink panels. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to leave a comment on my blog too to enter to win the all to new giveaway, and I'll see you soon with more inspiration. Mm -hmm.